Shit. We are coming back here, like a fucking hundred times. I am so mad. I am so fucking mad at these people. They don't do this to fucking me. We are gonna fucking ritualistically humiliate them. That's how the fucking world works. Little fucking They get ruled by people like me. Little fucking I fucking, my sisters fucking enslaved those pieces of shit. Those pieces of shit get ruled by people like me. They look up and see a face like mine looking down at them. That's how the fucking world works. We're going to destroy this fucking town. <laughs> Liars on the Right, number four, Richard Spencer. This video, I want to talk about metaphysics. I don't want to talk about racial slurs. I don't want to talk about bad behavior or the outcome of legal lawsuits. I want to talk about lies and the lies around metaphysics. So, the claim I want to address is the idea that metaphysics isn't real. And the summation of my argument is going to be something like, language is real, and language is as real as metaphysics. My understanding of the anti-metaphysical argument goes something like this. Uh, metaphysics is like heaven and hell. A con man, the first con man was the preacher, the priest. And he said to the poor man, he said, give me 10% of all your money, all your grain, your resources, your cattle, or you will go to hell. But if you give me 20%, you'll go to heaven. So the idea here is that we live in a real world with consequences and that metaphysics is a category of lie that there are these external worlds, the platonic realm, which is superior to the real world, that this world that we inhabit is a world of shadows, superficialities. It's ephemeral, but there's a real world of eternal forms, and we're trying to get to that real world. So... The way that I think of metaphysics is twofold. First of all, if I'm to accept this framing, I think it would be better that we call this mythology rather than metaphysics. And I think mythology does have utility through linguistics. Language is itself abstraction. The position would seem to follow that if we deny the reality of metaphysics, if we deny the reality of metaphor, if we deny the reality of mythology, then we end up in a position where we have to say words aren't real. I've been arguing recently against moral nihilism, privately, not in videos on YouTube, but I've been arguing about moral nihilism, and the claim of moral nihilists seems comparable and analogous to these claims of metaphysical nihilists, who claim that metaphysics isn't real. It seems to be an analogous claim to the idea that words aren't real, language isn't real, poetry isn't real, morality isn't real. If you're not familiar with moral nihilism, it's an aside to this video maybe, but I'll just kind of spell out what I believe about that proposition that morality changes. Morality is intangible. Morality is not verifiable. As I have these discussions with people who are more well-read than me, I've had this label of emotivist put on me. 
And emotivism, as I understand it, is the idea that our emotions are real. They cannot be invalidated. Now, we might say, for example, that our emotions are based on false perception or false premises. There's a lot of prank videos on YouTube where uh, someone will pretend to be cheating on their girlfriend, but it's just a prank. And in that moment, the supposition, of course, if she's not in on the prank, pranking the audience, is that she's feeling an emotion in response to false information. But the emotivist position is that emotion is real. And that's kind of like the basic standpoint that I come from, is that metaphysics has a real impact in the real world. Morality has a real impact in the real world. Emotions have a real impact in the real world. When we try to reduce these things to chemistry in the brain, when we try to, you know, hand wave away anything that is not quote unquote empirically verifiable, anything that is not tangible and sensible through our immediate perception. I think there are consequences to this, logical consequences that people have not considered when they make these arguments. For example, what is the future? What is the past? The future and past are not perceptible. They are not tangible. You cannot sense them except through the imagination. To me, when we look at a concept of a world of forms being more real than this immediate moment, that is a metaphor, much like Plato didn't literally believe we were actually stuck in a cave looking at shadows. Like, it's a metaphor. And the metaphor is this, that this present moment is connected to the past. It's connected to the future. And this present moment is tangible. I can feel my nose is itchy and the temperature in the room is rising and there's a certain level of light and some background noise. But this present moment is meaningless, except to the extent that it is a conclusion of the past and a premonition of the future. That problem of the infinite scope and scale of past and future, of imagined events, has to be confronted and overcome. There's a certain Buddhistic reaction to the overwhelming nature of infinitude that says just live in the moment, Eckhart Tolle, the power of now. And I'm not denying that there's value to that. But there are certain levels of understanding that each person is capable of achieving. So concerning the nature of the self, what is the self if not a metaphysic? We know that the arms and the legs the brain, the torso, these are all real objects in the brain. It's a real organ. We can cut open the head and manipulate it. But what is this self? What is this personality? Who is this person? If not an illusion, if not Maya. You know, I'm not an expert on Hindu metaphysics. If there is an anti, I know there is an anti-metaphysical tradition within India the Charvaka tradition, which is a materialist, anti-theist, or atheist position. When people try to use Hinduism and terms from Hinduism like Maya in order to attack the concept of metaphysics, 
I'm not sure if they're aware of the larger tradition that surrounds that word. You know, Maya, the concept of Maya is very platonic. Just a Plato would say, you know, the real sensory world or the thing that we perceive as real as a shadow, it's an illusion. And then there's some greater reality beyond our sensory perception. There are deep philosophical questions to be asked here, and I couldn't manage to fit them all into a 15 minute video, let alone a 40 minute video, let alone a two hour video. But I wanna introduce these questions because I believe that language is real. Metaphors are real, morality is real. When we point out inconsistencies and failures of the past, we point out primitive superstition, we point out falsehood. It seems to me that there is an ignorant and reactionary tendency to throw the baby out with the bathwater. To say that if one evil man one, at one time drank water that no one should ever drink water, it seems to me to be anti-natalist. The anti-metaphysical argument states that, you know, we live in the real world and to be a real true human animal, you know, to be the Nietzschean blonde beast means we sort of confront reality as it is. We don't have fanciful ideas of heaven or hell or God or anything beyond this present moment. We live in the present, we're the warrior class. But there seems to me to be something very anti-human about this. What differentiates humanity from the animals is our ability to think abstractly, our ability to use language as a tool of abstraction, to conceive through the imagination of past and future states, hypotheticals. And these hypotheticals in the imagination through the creativity of the human mind is able to conceive of powerful images, conjure up powerful emotions that are the seeds of the great technological inventions, not just of the 20th century, but throughout all history. Language and abstraction is the tool that we use to get beyond the immediacy of our sensory apparatus. We're not simply itchy and uncomfortable and hungry and tending to our needs as the animals do but we are able to become martyrs for a greater cause. We are able to sacrifice the needs of the immediate moment for the imaginary, for the abstract, for the metaphysical. So this is my basic argument in favor of metaphysics. I apologize that this video will not be covering every single metaphysical tradition from Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Platonism. I'm sorry that uh, this video will not address every bad thing Richard Spencer has ever done or said, but that was not the intention. Ultimately, the purpose of this channel is ideological de-radicalization toward friendship extremism. That's my purpose, and that is the sense in which I use the term liar as an admission that we all lie. We are all liars. I have lied intentionally or unconsciously in hundreds of hours of video. People can take this series of videos as a series of personal attacks, as a bitter vendetta, as an act of subversion they can perceive whatever intention they want. And at a certain point, I'm not going to convince those people, but I think there is always a 1%. In any tribe, in any group of people, there's always a 1% who can be swayed. And hopefully this video puts some questions in your mind. And if it did, then I'd appreciate that you leave a comment.
I know YouTube has taken away the dislike button. Leave a dislike anyway, because I can see it, even if you can't. And you can leave a comment with whatever insult or slur you want to leave, if people so choose, because this series seems to be generating some controversy. And if you really didn't like the video, you liked my previous videos, but this one was a bridge too far. It was just too zany, too wacky, too uncharitable, too mean-spirited. Please unsubscribe. If you watch this video and you said, you know what, I fully understand everything you say and you don't have any original takes anymore and I can just predict it all and I don't need to watch these videos. Also, please subscribe, but do so in, you know, love and charity. Follow me on Twitter. Every single person who follows me, I'll DM you and I'll say, hey, do you want a video chat? And if you don't want a video chat, don't follow me on Twitter. I want to get off the internet. Maybe you could point out some paradox in I'm advocating for metaphysics, but I do want to get into the real world with people. I think it's a paradox of semantics. I think it could be worked out philosophically, but I want people to know that I'm not a YouTube video or a series of YouTube videos. I am not a YouTube channel. I'm a human being. You're a human being. I'd like to connect with you, even if you disagree with me. I want to have a daily practice where every day people who watch me, who encounter me, encounter me on a personal level rather than through an alienated lens of abstraction, which that's simply what YouTube is. And sometimes we can't break through it, but I have an endless optimism that no matter how many times we fail, we can break through. Even if just for a moment. And if you like the video, you can like it as well. But I'm on Twitter at Jockel, J-O-K-K-U-L-L. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Subscribe, very good. Nice. Beautiful, very good. beautiful. You're gonna love it. If you love <laughs> autism, you're gonna love my channel. <laughs> okay, great. All right.